Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is design for testability that is DFT. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. Explain the necessity or need of DFT. Also explain the ad hoc DFT method. So in this session, we'll discuss the concept of DFT as well as the observability, controllability uh, related to the testability of a system. So first let us discuss the meaning of word design for testability that is DFT. I have written the definition. It is one of the simplified methods to test the ICs after manufacturing. So it is the technique to ensure that IC is effectively tested after manufacturing then verify the functionality of that IC and also to identify if there are any defects. Actually, there are traditional methods, but we know that if the circuit is complex, then it contains even millions of transistors. So it is very difficult as well as if the process is time consuming to test each and every IC individually. So this technique DFT that is designed for testability is used. So what is the need or necessity of DFT? As I said, the IC testing uh, using traditional method using normal method is a time consuming process as well as that is the expensive process because there are n number of or multiple many number of uh, transistors available in one particular IC. But this uh, technique DFT is automotive and optimization techniques. So the required time for the testing is reduced. Then Testing of each component in a complex circuit is difficult because there are n number of components as I explained right now. But DFT simplifies the test procedures. We will discuss it in detail then this point will be more clear to you. It makes use of certain automotive techniques. So this particular procedure of testing each component in the complex circuit becomes easy if you are using uh, this uh, DFT technique. It basically detects the common fault very easily. The common faults includes stuck at uh, fault like we discussed in earlier video. It is stuck at zero or stuck at one. Then bridging faults or timing faults like delay time and so on. So such common faults can be easily detected using this method. You don't have to follow the lengthy procedure like the traditional method. Then it improves the test coverage. The meaning of word test coverage is the uh, percentage of faults that can be detected uh, during the testing process. So that is the test coverage. It basically improves the test coverage compared to the ideal uh, compared to the traditional methods. So the test coverage is large compared to the earlier method. Then there are certain regions which are called hard to test regions. If you are using a traditional method, then especially let us say like this, you want to insert the probe, then there are certain regions on the PCB. So those regions are hard to test regions using normal methods. But since this technique makes use of certain automotive tools, so hard to test regions can be easily accessible. Then it improves yield. The meaning of this word yield is how much percentage or what is the percentage of pro properly functioning ICs compared to the total ICs that you are testing. So it improves the yield and reliability of the circuit. It improves the reliability because we are getting uh, the idea of fault before proceeding the particular complex circuit. So it improves yield and reliability. The faults are identified earlier in the manufacturing process. Then it includes one of the important techniques that is BIST, built-in self-test. So this, this methodology has built-in self-test. So it automatically tests the uh, circuit. So due to this built-in self-test, the fault detection can be easily done and it reduces debugging of fault. In case of normal methods, even if the fault is detected, debugging or correction of that fault is a time consuming method. But using this BIST built in self test, the fault detection uh, also improves as well as it reduces the time required for debugging the fault. So this is about the need or necessity of DFT. Next part is ad hoc DFT. As I mentioned earlier, 
along with the uh, question of need of DFT, the explanation of ad hoc DFT can be well uh, expected. So we are considering a system. This is the pipeline structure. Let us we say we have one complex circuit which consists of pipeline structures like one, two, and three. Using the normal DFT method, if you want to test the entire circuit at a stretch at a time, if you want to test the entire circuit, then it is time consuming as well as complex process. So in ad hoc DFT, the entire circuit is divided, is split into smaller subparts at a time, each subpart is tested. So that is the basic aim of this ad hoc DFT. So I've written few important points. Divide the larger system, that means entire system is divided into smaller groups. So divide the larger system into smaller parts, then you need to insert MUX. MUX is the multiplexer. So by using multiplexer, it is possible to apply the portion of the input signal to that particular part which you want to test. So insert multiplexer as well as you need to include control signals. Again, these control signals must be included so that you can easily access a particular smaller part of the entire circuit. So as I said, this is the pipeline structure. If you want to apply this ad hoc DFT technique, you need to insert multiplexers in the structure as well as you need to insert, you need to include the control signals so that you can easily test a sub portion or a particular part of the of the entire large system independently this mux multiplexer provides the test points that means it provides the points uh, for the testing purposes like uh, we are going to study this thing in detail like there is a concept of observability then controllability and so on so such uh, points test points are provided by the mux the different guidelines, I have listed different guidelines for this ad hoc DFT. Always and always try to avoid the combinational feedback loop because it is easier to test the sequential circuit rather than the combinational circuit. So if in a larger system, there is a combinational feedback loop, combinational feedback path, then that should be avoided. Then you need to separate out the analog and digital parts of the circuit. Then avoid redundant logic circuit. Redundant means unnecessarily certain extra logical circuits are might be used in the circuit. So you need to avoid these redundant logical circuits. Then avoid asynchronous logic. You need to always prefer the synchronous logic. So you need to avoid the asynchronous logic circuits. Then split larger counters into smaller ones. If there are larger counters, you need to partition it. You need to divide it into smaller counters and reset all the flip-flops which are used in the circuit by applying the reset or clear uh, signals. So this is about the ad hoc DFT. Next part is testability. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this related to testability, explain the terms, controllability, observability and predictability of a given circuit. So as the word indicates, testability is the ability which indicates how much it is easy to test the given logical circuit. So that is the uh, meaning of word testability. Now first term controllability, as the name indicates, you can control the the level that is logic 0 or logic 1 at a particular stage in the circuit so it is ability to provide a specific signal logic level that means either 0 or uh, logic 1 at each node in the given circuit then this is done i mean you need to provide logic 0 or logic 1 desired uh, signal level at each node this can be done by setting the primary input values the term high controllability means a specific states of the circuit can be reached and tested easily. That is the meaning of word high controllability. So it becomes easy to provide desired values for internal signals by applying appropriate test vector input combinations. That means uh, during this process, you need to uh, choose a proper in, uh, combination of the input signal. By choosing this proper combination, you can assign the desired signal level at each node of the circuit. 
Then second term is observability. The term observability is related to uh, observe or taking the measurement at a particular stage of the circuit. So it is related to ability to observe or measure the logical states of a signal during the testing process of the given circuit. The term high observability is related to the circuit output which is accurately monitored. Then the circuit to check the observability, the circuit should be driven to the given state and then only you can check the observability. Third term is predictability. As the name indicates, you are in a position to predict the output of a particular stage of a circuit that is related to this uh, predictability. So predict the expected behavior under the specific test conditions. Then test vector that you can say a combination of different uh, signals. So test vector applied to the circuit should cover all the critical parts of that circuit which you want to test. It provides information about how circuit responses or how circuit gives response to the different applied inputs. Then this uh, predictability can be easily achieved by providing or by making use of extensive pre-silicon simulation and modeling. By making use of this, you can obtain the predictability. So this is about the different terms related to testability. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.